I'm going to give a brief introduction to buffers and how they work and do a little bit of math. Um, this is the beginning of chapter 15, which is the study of buffers and titration curves, which we've already worked some on titration curves. We already know the results when we have a strong acid, strong base titration and a strong acid, weak base. Uh, what we're trying to do in this chapter is to figure out what the relative pH is going to be before, during, and after the titration, as well as understanding how buffers work and where buffers are formed in a titration process. The buffer concept is built on the idea of a common ion. Common ion is simply an ion that is placed into an equilibrium situation. So here we have ammonia dissociating in water to form ammonium hydroxide, and now we're adding the salt, ammonium chloride, to that equilibrium situation. So we're adding the common ammonium ion. If we look at Le Chatelier's principle, adding this ion will shift the equilibrium to the left. We'll shift the equilibrium left. That will reduce the amount of hydroxide ion that is formed, so it will reduce the dissociation and the pH will go up as the reaction becomes less basic. Let's look at how exactly the addition of this common ion works mathematically. First, let's go through a typical ice where we calculate the pH of a 0.25 molar ammonia solution. So this again is your basic x squared over 0.25 equals your Kb. Don't forget this would be a Kb reaction. So you should be able to stop, put that in, and quickly calculate a pH of this weak base before we add the common ion. Once you're finished, you've got x squared over 0.25 minus x, throw out that X is going to give you a pOH of 2.67 and a pH of 11.33, which would be typical for this concentration of an ammonia solution. Now we're going to add some of that common ion in. The ice is still going to be the same. You've got now the ammonia. There's no hydroxide ion, and written normally there would be no ammonium ion, but you are adding the ammonium from the ammonium chloride. So this is the common ion setup. So again, your X's, and at equilibrium here, you've got 0.1 plus X and 0.02, excuse me, 0 0.25 minus X. setting up your ratios and throwing out your x's that are added or subtracted. You will always be able to simplify using that Kb value. Gives you a pOH and a pH of 9.65. So by adding that common ion, we got what Le Chatelier predicted. We shifted the reaction to the left, reducing the hydroxide ion and causing the pH to increase. This is called a buffer. A buffer is when the common ion effect is used to prevent a change in pH. A buffer is made from a weak acid and its conjugate base, an example, or a weak base and its conjugate acid. When you take the dissociation of an acid, so when an acid dissociates in water, again remember water is actually here and we're really forming the hydronium ion, but we're going to use the shortcut equation. So we form the conjugate base. When you add hydroxide to this equilibrium situation, it's going to react, the hydroxide is going to react with the strongest acid in this equilibrium situation, which will be the weak acid, 
and the chemistry that's going to take place is the weak acid plus hydroxide forms some more of the conjugate base. When you add the hydronium ion, it's going to react with the strongest base in this reaction, which would be the conjugate base. And that chemistry is going to be A negative plus, plus the hydronium ion reforms some of the A negative. So basically, the hydroxide ion will react with the acid to reform the conjugate base, and the hydronium ion will react with the conjugate base to reform the weak acid. Again, all you're doing in this process is changing the HA A negative amounts, turning some HA into A negative by adding hydroxide, or turning some A negative into HA by adding the hydronium ion. When all you're doing is shifting the ratio of weak acid to conjugate base, then all you're doing is changing the amounts of these species. This is our typical Ka expression, and we've already shown this useful version of it, which is the hydronium ion is equal to Ka times HA over A negative, always the acid over its conjugate base. So you can see that H plus and Ka are related by the ratio of the HA and the A negative to each other. If the change in the ratio is small, then the pH change will also be quite small. This equation is only to be used when you have both the weak acid and its conjugate base. This would be when you are titrating or preparing a buffer. So only when you have concentrations of both the weak acid and some of its conjugate base can you use this relationship. So what is the pH of a buffer that has the weak acid concentration and the conjugate base concentration? So if you set up your ice and start out with your weak acid concentration and your conjugate base. Remember normally this would be zero from just the dissociation, but you are adding the common ion. <clears throat> so now your math is the 0.7 minus x at equilibrium 0.6 plus x. You know you're going to throw these x's out. So by the time you set up your ice, You can solve it with the typical ice expression and simplify, but you can also make it even easier on yourself if you recognize that this is a buffer situation, excuse me, where you have some concentration of both the weak acid and its conjugate base. Therefore, H plus is equal to the Ka value times the ratio of the acid to the base. So we know that even if we were using the ice expression, we would be eliminating. So that's why this already takes that into account. And very quickly, the hydronium ion can be calculated, and the pH of this buffer solution can quickly be calculated. The change in the buffer solution would simply then be the changes in these concentrations as you add H plus or OH negative. Again, make sure you're clear that the pH is largely determined by the Ka of an acid. And then when you're making your buffer, so your hydronium ion concentration is going to be largely equivalent to this, 
and then this ratio will tweak it. So when you're trying to make a buffer in the laboratory, you actually want to have equal amounts of acid and conjugate base so that your hydronium ion and your Ka value are close to being equivalent and your buffer can absorb equal amounts of added hydroxide and added hydronium ion. So you adjust the ratio to get the exact pH. Let's look at some acid choices to see how we would do this. So if you want to make a buffer at a pH of 4.3, that means your hydronium ion is 10 to the negative pH. So 10 to the negative 4.3 gives you that molarity for your hydronium ion. So you already know that part of the equation. So you're going to choose an acid that has a Ka value as close to this value as possible or a pKa value as close to this value as possible. And we would want these ratios to be as equivalent so that basically they can absorb, quotes, absorb acid or added base. So again, an equal concentration would pretty much cancel out, leaving you with a Ka equal to the hydronium ion. You will always probably have to adjust it, okay, you'd adjust this ratio in order to get the exact pH. So if you wanted to make this buffer and you had these possible acids, and of course these are the conjugate bases of those acids, if you look at the Ka values, you want to find a Ka as close to that value as possible. And the only one that's even reasonable is the acetic acid because at least it has the correct exponential power and then we'd have to tweak the ratios to get those numbers to agree. So if we want that pH, okay, we're going to say that our hydronium ion is this and our Ka is this. Now we simply have to solve for this ratio algebraically. When we do that, we get a ratio of 2.78 to 1. Now this could mean, remember this is always the acid on top and the conjugate base, that for every mole of conjugate base we need 2.78 moles of the acid. That would be quite a large concentration, but we can have infinite ratios. A 0.1 mole of the conjugate base would require 0.278 moles of the acetic acid. No matter what the ratio is, as long as it's within this initial ratio, you will always have a pH that you're looking for. Make sure you understand the concentration of the acid and conjugate base are not important. You could use, like we said, the 0.1 molar or the 1 molar. The concentrations are not important. It's the ratio of those moles that will determine the pH. But make sure you understand, while diluting a buffer solution does not change its pH, it does affect the buffer capacity. So if you have a 1 molar buffer capacity versus a 0.1, you're going to be able to interact with more additional hydronium and hydroxide ion before your buffer is not able to work anymore. The most effective buffer ratio that you want is 1 to 1. That means that you have picked an acid with a Ka very close to the hydronium ion concentration that you're looking for. There are several ways to make a buffer. First, you can start with a weak acid and simply add its conjugate base, like acetic acid and sodium acetate, or a weak base and its conjugate acid, as we've been using in our previous examples. You can take a weak acid and start titrating it with the hydroxide ion, which essentially will form the conjugate base. It will turn some of the conjugate acid into 
the conjugate base. Remember, that's what a titration is. So you can start with a weak acid and add hydroxide until you get the correct pH. Or you can start with the conjugate base and add hydronium ion to it so that you're converting some of the salt back in to the weak acid. And you can do that until you reach the correct pH. One of the more common ways is the first by simply taking a weak acid off the shelf and adding the correct amount of salt to it as we saw in this previous question where we figured out the exact ratio. We could get that ratio by titrating the weak acid, but it's often easier simply to calculate and put those amounts into the beaker together. You will be making buffers with all of these methods throughout this chapter.